So today I wanted to talk about Lucifer, but I scrolled through my wall and noticed one really ridiculous Facebook post, which I won't put in here because I don't want to violate somebody else's privacy. But to be honest, that post was ridiculous because it showed how much occultists today do not care about basic things such as education, understanding of history and understanding of cultures from which spiritual systems are coming from. So today, instead of talking about Lucifer, I will talk about Horus, or Horus, Egyptian god. And in this video, I won't talk about ways to call Horus, since the magical trend for calling him, I can't remember right now. But around a year ago, I called Horus in my magical ritual. And uh, it was, indeed, interesting experience. I wanted to test our person, the Goetic King, and Horus, the Egyptian god, a same being. And I called Lucifer to help me summoning Horus. Since I didn't want an imposter to show up. I wanted Egyptian god Horus to show up. And I wanted to record my experience with the public. I share it with the public, but I didn't do did it back in the day. I called Horus upon... And what I found out was pretty interesting. What came into my temple wasn't Lucifer, or a form of Lucifer, but it was pretty similar to Lucifer in the energy signature. So I called Lucifer, and then together with Lucifer I called Egyptian god Horus. And uh, what showed upon was different and separate from Lucifer, but it had similar energy signature to Lucifer. Similar electric blue energy. And my third eye reacted in a really powerful way to the presence of Horus. To the presence of this mighty Egyptian deity. And to be honest... Right now I remembered this experience. Because this experience showed to me just like this Facebook post of some of my Facebook friend that modern occultism doesn't give shit about anything. People are just making stuff up without basis in anything, or practical value, and they present it as spiritual knowledge, okay? You have conspiracy theories claiming Lucifer is Horus, Horus is Satan, Horus is Purson, and you don't have to be an uh, expert in occultism. The only thing you have to be is somebody with the brain and ability to read in order to realize that this is all false bullshit, you know? Horus is celestial god. He is associated with the heavens. He is associated with prophecy, war, guarding of the pharaoh and ability to perceive other worlds. He is associated to some extent with the sun, but with the moon too. Old symbol for protection in ancient Egypt 
was known as the eye of Horus. So, only if you take that scholarly information we have from Egyptologists, right? And then you compare to all of the scholarly information we have about Lucifer. Lucifer as ancient Roman god. Lucifer as consort of Diana in Stregoneria, Italian folk witchcraft. Lucifer as a Venus and sun god, right? Which is then demonized to be fallen angel of Christianity after Vatican came in, okay? So, you see from the lore of Lucifer and the lore of Horus that there are really significant differences, okay? Lucifer is some kind of a god of the witch cult, right? Associated with nature. While Horus is a state god of highly sophisticated state, the guardian of the pharaoh, the power used to empower the ruling class, the rulers, which gives them power to rule over others to property. While Lucifer represents something else completely, he is more like witch god or the witch cult within Italian folk, old religion, okay? Origins of Lucifer, if you look at history, at fucking history, she have nothing to do with Old Testament. Yeah, Lucifer is incorporated into Christianity. Because he was a god of folk Italian witchcraft. And Lucifer and Horus come from completely different cultural background and cultural framework and spiritual systems, right? And then you have like people saying Lucifer and Horus are the same. And you kept saying Horus and Satan are the same or Horus and Person are the same. It's all nonsense. Not only it doesn't have any practical value, but it also doesn't have any scholarly value. If you think Lucifer is Horus and you use the demonic kind of Lucifer to call Horus, you are, you are calling Lucifer. You are working with Lucifer. You are not working with Horus. If you use Goetic evocation to call King of Demons, Purson, you are working with King of Demons, Purson. You are working with Horus. If you want to work with Horus, you need to call Spirit, which knows Horus. For example, Lucifer or Isis or... I don't know, Osiris. And then after you call Osiris, with their help, call Horus, and receive from the Horus way of calling him. Or, find somebody who practices Egyptian magic, and then, you know, call Horus using their methodology. You know? Because you, a bunch of people work with spirits, for example. Some people work with Satan and then they say that every spirit in every culture from every religion of any significance is somehow Satan. Because they work with Satan. And because they work with Satan Everybody actually work with Satan according to them, but we don't know we work with Satan, right? And yeah, this kind of bullshit goes on and on and on. Equating spirits from different cultures without any idea about those cultures. And without any idea 
What is historic background behind those spirits? Linguistic background, archaeological evidence, theological concepts, you know? They just equate spirits without any idea what they are talking about. So, thanks for watching and peace out. And, uh, before I end this video, I need to talk about horrors, okay? Many people, especially today, blame Osiris, Isis and Horus for origin of Christianity. This has no historical value. This claim, the only thing this claim proves is the absence of any historical education. Modern Christianity has two streams of origin. One is ancient Ugaritic slash Canaanite pantheon and Zoroastrianism. Those two religions are the great influences on the Old Testament. And then you have Old Roman religion and mystery schools, which are the great influence on the New Testament. Egyptian magic, by the way, has some decent influence on Coptic Christianity, which are minor Christian group of Orthodox Christians living in Egypt today. And Coptic Christians are, oh my god, descendants of ancient Egyptians. And their liturgical language, the Coptic language, is actually the closest living language to fucking ancient Egyptian. But, Coptic Christians, my dear friends, are obscure Christian group. Any fucking town in United States bigger town have more people in it than Coptic Christianity. Muslims are killing Copts and Orthodox Christians of the Coptic Church and they are really a prosecuted minority. And they still use Egyptian Ankh, the cross of life, in their liturgical practices and Egyptian magic has decent influence only on Coptic Christianity. You won't find Egyptian symbolism in Orthodox Christianity. You won't find Egyptian symbolism in the Vatican. You won't find Egyptian symbolism in, you know, Protestant Christianity. The symbolism you will find in Christianity originates from Babylonia and from Rome and from Zoroastrianism. They use that symbolism. I can quote you hundreds and hundreds of examples of that. But if you want to find ex Egyptian symbolism in a way in a Catholic Church, you won't find it. Despite of what conspiracy theories are telling you, Egyptian tradition has really minor influence on Christianity. Jesus as a resurrecting God or figure is much different than Osiris. If you look at the mythological framework behind it. Jesus, Jesus comes to sacrifice for your sins and to prove you and to teach you you are a piece of shit and a sinner. Osiris, on the other hand, sacrifices in order to rule the underworld 
and be the judge of the dead. And did humanity, the secrets of sorcery, the secrets of all the of agriculture, and to empower humanity. So, comparing Jesus and Osiris is like comparing Jesus to Odin. Because in both myths you have sacrifice involved. Yeah, Jesus and Osiris both have sacrifice in their mythology. But they sacrifice for completely different reason. And they sacri- and their sacrifice means completely different thing. And those two deities behave in a completely different way. Start studying. Don't base your understanding of a cult on conspiracy theories. So, this is everything for today and thanks for watching.